this sounds very similar to the whole concept of some vengeance back to you're paying attention to what's going on. So, we've done all this, and then the, the topic for his product, because this word ended a bit ago, okay? The topic is what I'm going to do next time. Like, we want to have more. What happens if someone bigger shows up? That was just another planet. Hello, everybody. Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, William Mark Austin, an angry, ugly, fat guy, and uh, I am here to discuss with you the uh, final text of the Safe Third Country Agreement, which I will link, link into chat. And which I will uh, link, put a link into the description when this um, um, this uh, um, stream goes uh, becomes a um, uh, video. The uh, the uh, 
the uh, safe third country agreement between Canada and the government of Canada and the United States of America. Um, yeah, it uh, it's regarding asylum seekers. Um, basically, it says that an asylum seeker uh, must seek asylum in the first of those two countries in which they arrive. Um, in the um, the preface, it, they even say, noting that refugee status claimants may uh, arrive at the Canadian Well, let me read the preface. The government of the Can of Canada and the government of the United States here and after referred to as the parties, considering that Canada is a party to the 1951 convention related, relating to the status of refugees done at Geneva, July 28th, 1951, the convention, and the protocol relating to the status of refugees done at New York, January 31st, 1967, the protocol that the United States and that the United States is a party to the protocol and reaffirming their obligation to provide protection for refugees on their territory in accordance with these instructions. Acknowledging, in particular, the international legal obligations of the parties under the principle of non-refoulement non set forth in the Convention and Protocol, as well as the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel and Inhumane degrading, degrading Treatment or Punishment, done at New York, December 10th, 1984, the torture convention and reaffirming their mutual obligations to promote and protect human rights and fundamental freedoms, recognizing and respecting the obligations of each party under its immigration policies, instructions, and agreements. Emphasizing that the United States and Canada offer generous rough systems of refugee protection recalling both countries' tradition of, traditions of assistance to refugees and displaced persons abroad, consistent with the principles of international solidarity that underpin the international refugee production system, committed to the notion that cooperation and burden sharing with respect to refugee status claimants can be ha enhanced. This, yeah. So basically we're talking about uh, cooperation and with regards to um, refugee claimants. Desiring to hold asylum as an indispensable instrument of, inter of the international production of refugees and resolved to strengthen the integrity of the institution and the public support on which it, which it depends. Noting that refugee claimants may arrive at the Canadian or United States land border directly from the other party territory from the other territory, territory where they could have found protection. Convinced in keeping with the advice from the United Nations High Commissioner of Refugees, UNHCR, and the Executive Committee that agreements among states may enhance the protection of refugees by promoting 
the orderly handling of asylum applications by the responsible party and the pr principle of burden sharing. Aware that such sharing of responsibility must ensure that the practice of persons in need of international protection are identified and that the possibility of indirect breaches of, fund of the fundamental principle of non refoulement are avoided and therefore determined to safeguard for each refugee status claimant eligible to pursue a protection status claim from who comes within their jurisdiction access to a fair full and fair refugee status determination procedure as a means to guarantee that the pre that the protections of the convention the protocol the to and the torture convention are effectively afforded now i'm just gonna uh look up real quick we be let me check that word Ugh. Uh, nothing helpful there. Um, but basically, the, the, um, in implementing this agreement, the idea is to make the whole idea of uh, the whole procedure for accepting um, refugees uh, much more uh, efficient, and that has long been that has long been my biggest issue with people crossing into Canada from the United States. Uh, Artic um, have agreed as follows. Article one. In this agreement, country of agreement means that the country, that country being means that country being either Canada or the United States in which the re refugee claimant was physically present immediately prior to making a refugee status claim at a land border port of entry. Family member means the spouse, sons, daughters, parents, legal guardians, siblings, grandparents, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, nieces, and nephews. Wow, that's a lot of people. Refugee status claim means a request from a person to the government of either party for protection consistent with the convention or the protocol the torture convention or other protection grounds in a, accordance with the respective laws of each party. Refugee st uh, status claim, that means any person who makes a refugee status claim in the territory of one of the parties. Refugee status determination system means the sums some of laws and administration and judicial practices employed by each person's national government for the purposes of educating, adjudicating refugees' status claims. Unaccompanied minor means an unmarried refugee status claimant who has not reached his or her 
18th birthday and does not have a parent or legal gar guardian in either Canada or the United States. Each party shall apply this agreement in respect of, of family members and an unaccompanied mi minors consistent with its national law. Um, an article to this agreement does not apply to status uh, claimants who are citizens of Canada or the United States or who not having uh, a country of nationality are ha habitual residents of Canada or the United States. Uh, that is that is fair. Uh, basically, um, it doesn't mean it means that this agreement in particular, if an American comes to Canada to claim asylum, or a Canadian goes to America to claim asylum, that this particular agreement does not apply to them. Article 3, in, a, in order to ensure that refugee status claimants have access to refugee to a refugee status determination system uh, let me begin again article 3 in order to ensure that refugee status claimants have access to refugee status determination system the party shall not return or remove a refugee status claimant referred by, an, by either party under the terms of Article 4 to another country until an adjudication of the person's refugee status has been made. Uh, Article 3.2, the parties shall not remove a refugee status claim re returned to the country of last presence under the terms of this agreement to another country pursuant to any um, other safe third car country agreement or regulatory designation. Basically says that we'll give you a, a, a refugee hearing. Article 4. Of paragraph one subject to paragraphs two and three the party of the country of last present shall examine in accordance with re with its refugee status determination system the refugee status claim of any uh of any person who arrives at a land border port of entry on or after the effective date of this agreement and makes a refugee status claim Responsibility for determining the refugee status claim of any person referred to in paragraph one shall rest with the party of the receiving country and not the party of the last of the country of last presence. For the part where the receiving party determines the person. Has the ter has in the territory of the of the receiving has in the territory of the receiving party at least one family member who has had a refugee sta status claim granted or has been granted lawful status other than as a visitor in the. in the receiving party's territory or has been in the territory of the receiving party at least one family member who is at least 18 years of age and is not eligible to pursue a refugee status claim in the receiving party's refugee status determination system or has such a claim pending or is an unaccompanied minor are arrived in the territory of the receiving party with a validly issued visa or other 
valid admission document other than for transit issued by the receiving party or not being required to obtain a visa by only the receiving party. The party of the country of last present shall not of last present shall not be required to accept the return of a of a final determination with respect to this agreement is made by the receiver being party. Neither party shall reconsider any decision that an individual qualifies for an exception under articles except for an exception under articles four and six of this agreement. Uh, that sounds like there's a lot of extra work. Article 5. In cases involving the removal of a person by one party in transit through the territory of the other party, the parties agree as follows. A. Any person being removed from can Canada in transit through the United States who makes a claim, who makes a refugee status, Uh, who makes a refugee status claims in the United States shall be returned to Canada to have the refugee status claim examined by and and and, and in accordance with the refugee status determination system of Canada. B. Any person being removed from the United States in transit through Canada who makes a refugee status claim in Canada whose refugee status claim has been rejected by the United States shall be permitted onward movement to the country to which the person has been removed or who has not had a refugee status claim determined by the United States shall be returned to the United States to have the refugee status claim examined and in accordance to the refugee status determination system of the United States. This is important. This is an important article because uh, here's where we start to see um, Here's where we start to see um, the, re the uh, uh, idea of applying for refugee status in, in the first safe country that you, agree, that you get to. Article 6. Notwithstanding any provision of this agreement, either party may at its own discretion examine any refugee status made to that party where it determines that it's in its own public interest to do so. <laughs> Article 7. The parties may a exchange such information as may be necessary for the effective implementation of this agreement subject to national laws and regulations. This information shall, shall not be disclosed by the party of the receiving country except in accordance with its national laws and, and regulations. The parties shall seek to ensure that information is not exchanged or disclosed in such a way as to play refugee status claimants or their families at risk in their countries of origin. Exchange on a regular basis information on the laws, regulations, and practices relating to the respective refugee status determination systems. Article 8. Number 1. The parties shall develop standard operating procedures to assist 
with the implementation of this agreement. These procedures shall include provisions for notification to the country of oh. these procedures shall include provisions for notification to the country of last presence in advance of the return of any refugee status claimant pursuant to this agreement. Number two, these procedures shall include mechanisms for resolving differences between the interpretation and implementation in, of the terms of this agreement. Issues which cannot be resolved through these mechanisms shall be settled through diplomatic channels. The number three, the, par the, the parties agree to review this agreement and its implementation. The refuse, the first review shall take place not later than 12 months from the date of entry into force and shall be jointly conducted by the representatives of each party. The parties shall invite UNHCR to participate in this review. The parties shall cooperate in UNHCR in the monitoring of this agreement and seek input from non-governmental organizations. Article 9. Both parties shall, upon request, endeavor to assist the other in the resettlement of persons determined to require protection in appropriate circumstances. Article 10. This our agreement shall enter into force upon exchange of notes between the parties indicating that each has com completed the necessary domestic legal um, domestic legal procedures for bringing into bringing the agreement into force. Either party may terminate this agreement upon six months written notice of to the other party. Either party may upon written notice to the other party suspend for a period about the three months application of this agreement. Such suspension may be renewed for additional periods of up to three months. Either party may, with the agreement of the other party, suspend any part of this agreement. The Parties may agree on any modification of or addition to this agreement in writing. When so agreed and approved in accordance with the applicable legal procedures of each party, the modification or addition shall constitute an integral part of this agreement. Um, and then there's some uh, note after the signatures. Uh, let's see. The parties attend, intend to act according to the following principles. Opportunity for third party during proceedings. Provided no undue result, delay results and it does not unduly interfere with the process each party will provide an opportunity with the applicant for the applicant to have a person of his or who, her own choosing appropriate present at appropriate points during procedures during the agreement details concerning access to proceedings will be set out in operational procedures
Proof of family relationships. Procedures will acknowledge that the burden of proof is on the applicant to satisfy the decision maker that a family relationship exists and that the relative in question has the required status. Credible testimony may be su uh, su uh, sufficient to satisfy decision maker in the absence of documentary evidence or computer records. It may be appropriate in these circumstances to request that the applicant and the relative provide sworn statements attesting to their family relationships. Uh, number three, standard for determining eligibility for an exception to the agreement. The United States will use the preponderance of evidence standard to determine whether an applicant uh, qualifies for an exception under the agreement. Canada will use the balance of probability standard to determine whether an applicant qualifies for an exception under the agreement. These standards are functionally equivalent. Uh, number four, review each party will ensure that its pro procedures provide at a minimum, number one, an opportunity for the applicant to understand the basis for the proposed determination, number two, an opportunity for the applicant to provide corrections or additional relevant information provided that it does not unduly re delay the process, and three, an opportunity for the applicant uh, to have a separate decision maker who um, was not involved in preparing and in preparing the proposed determination, reviewing any proposed determination before it is finally made. Record of interview number five, record of interview and eligibility determination. Upon request and subject to national law, Canada and the United States will share all written materials pertaining to whether an applicant qualifies for an exception under the agreement. Subject to national law, this information will also be available to the applicant. Request to, to reconsider exception determinations. Each party will leave, have the description to request reconsideration of a decision by either party to deny an application's request for an exception under the agreement should new information or information that is not being previously considered come to light. Number seven. No reconsideration of positive determinations. Neither party will reconsider. Neither party will reconsider any decision that an applicant qualifies for an exception under the agreement. Number eight, timeline for return under the agreement. Returns to the country of last pre presence under the agreement must take place within 90 days after the original refugee status claim is made. So in other words, people are, are coming to Canada for like 90 days and using up all these resources that could better be used um, dealing with people who didn't make it to the United States. Um, um, anyway, uh, that was uh, the text of the Safe Third Country Agreement. It's a bit... Um, Bit wordy and filled with a lot of legalese because, well, it's a it's a treaty.
Um, uh, some of it's uh, a bit over my head, but uh, just I I think is that yeah you you, um, you apply for asylum where you first get at the place you first get and if you want to make things difficult for yourself and everyone else well go ahead uh, unfortunately uh, we can't and unfortunately if you make it into to uh, the country even if uh, um, even if you were in the uh, United States or Canada, you still get a chance to uh, put a spanner in the works. Have fun messing up with uh, all the legitimate refugees, assholes. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, end the stream. Um, uh, I hope... Uh, uh, I plan to, uh, it's been a while since I've uh, put some content on my channel, so uh, I am hoping to uh, do a bit more um, things like this uh, with the hopes of helping myself and other people well, better understand the issues of the day and uh, remember people. Nothing the goddamn government does is compassionate. But that doesn't mean that we personally cannot be. Just don't expect it from the government. Their, their rule is good policy. Have a good day.